So, you know, PES obviously they manufacture their things and, and have, you know, they create their bars and their, you know, or, or, or okay, let's use Craze as an example. They, they're putting meth in there because they have, but they have their in, own in house. So, how involved is, is Mars going to have to be? Because, like, they can't just trust, like, you're gonna, we're gonna sign a piece of paper and just trust that you're doing it because, like, if you're in the meth product, like, that's a big. Does that yeah, make sense? Should, like, should, like, should Coldstone be like amino acid testing these batches themselves? Like, how? Well, and I know. I Welcome to Price Pop. All right, what's going on, Price Pop Nation? This is Mike, CJ, and special guest Joshua Shaw of J Shaw Consulting here. And so it's May twenty second, twenty eighteen. Talk of the town this week is BSN Synthesis Six Protein, a bestseller for many, many years. BSN, a Glambia owned company, has just partnered up with Cold Stone Creamery for some ice cream flavored protein powders. And so we want to talk a little, about, a little bit about the product specifically, but also just about licensing in general and how this is like finally kind of happening in the industry. Uh, obviously we're gonna have to touch on Dan at Ghost because Ghost is, uh, they did it with Warheads and they're, they're looking to do a little bit more. So uh, what's going on? Why is it taking so long for like, a real like flavor kind of company to get into the protein powder game or yeah I mean I think that and honestly so just to kind of take a, a step back on um, so cold some creamery is owned by a, a, a kind of a conglomerate of, of franchise uh, restaurant kind of company so uh, they're called it's called Kahala brands they're I think they're based maybe in Phoenix but they own a bunch of different smoothie concepts they own cold stone they own um, some sub shops and all kinds of different things so uh, Quite honestly, with the smoothie concept, they've been buying sports nutrition products for a long time because a lot of those smoothie shops are in LA Fitnesses and things like that. So they've been close to the fire for a long time. They've mm -hmm. actually um, been talking about um, making a, a, a um, like licensed protein powder for a while. Mm -hmm. And a little known, I, mean, I don't think it ever met uh, the light of day, but there was a company called Gear Sports Nutrition. I don't know if you remember that. So yeah, I think yellow uh, bottles. Yeah. So I think Liz Gaspari was behind it. Um, that was post kind of breakup with the whatever the drama of, of the relationship. But um, she kind of her first uh, take was with Gear Supplement or Sports Nutrition. I don't know the exact concept, but they had a deal I think with um, Cold Stone to come out with with some stuff. It never met the light of day because the the brand was short lived, and I think they just never really got to that point. But I think that uh, the Kahala brands and just Cold Stone in general, I think they've always kind of wanted to do a protein powder with these ice cream flavors. Um, I think it's, I mean, I think the perfect product or the perfect protein powder in our industry is Synthesix for it because it's already so rich right. and, and kind of like, I think the macros fit well. It's looked you know, at It's looked at as kind of a, like don't worry about the calories and the macros. I think it's like looked at yeah. as a delicious. Dessert protein. Yeah, it's a dessert protein. Yeah, that's a good one. And I, I, it is, I mean, it's delicious. Like I. Yeah, you get like 15 grams of carbs with it, but they have like six different types of protein yeah. in it or blends like super rich and smooth. Mm -hmm. Chocolate peanut butter is one that I was like, whoa, yeah. all yeah. over. And so it makes sense that uh, I guess an ice cream company that's got flavors down to a T yeah. would want to get into this. I'm not sure how they're that, how they're mixing the whole Cold Stone thing. So for people who don't know, and you might be able to explain it better, but Cold Stone Creamery, what they do is they, they have a very Cold Stone and you put on like vanilla ice cream or you have your base ice cream and they mix in all the uh, the fixins that you want to put in there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure if they're going to be mixing in chunks of stuff into this uh, protein or if it's more of just a, a the flavored powder. Yeah, I don't, I'm not exactly sure. I didn't really look into, because they have, a th I think, maybe three or four flavors that, that launched. Um, you know, I think that whatever flavors they probably come out with, um, I'm sure it's gonna be delicious. They have to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, already the base flavors of Synthetics are, are delicious. So I think you know a partnership. Um, I can't see why they couldn't knock out of the park. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Like I'm not like an expert at Cold Stone, but that's one thing that when he was saying that, first of all, I was at, I was wondering whether or not Cold Stone is a like that name itself like resonates enough with people. Second of all. They're not, not that I know of, are known for like any particular flavor. That, right. Yeah, that's a, I, I guess that's you know, the like, point. Like they, like people go there because they want to make their own flavor. Right. Like do they have like the Big Mac of flavors that people go in and that's the one they go for all the time? Like obviously I don't know enough about Cold Stone to know like their makeup of, of sales. I'd imagine they have, I Josh, know. Big Macs are at McDonald's. I'm thinking about Big Mac flavor protein. I know, but, <laughs> so I, but that comment I made was like, yeah, they, you, quote unquote, a, 
an A like product, an A skew. You go you there, I mean? yeah. You go there for the process right. of building that, or watching that your ice cream get built, not really the flavor itself. But build your own protein, a PSN. But I mean, the Cold Stone name is definitely a national franchise. It has, I don't know the exact footprint of stores, but they have a lot of a lot of stores. So I don't think it's any issue in terms of people not knowing what Cold Stone is. Sure. Um, I just not sure, like whatever the flavors they chose as the flavors they're coming out with, whatever those branded flavors are. I don't know if those. Are such a big pool. Like, do people go to Cold Stone because they want to pick off the menu, or do they, or, or do they want to mix in all their other stuff because well, they want to create their own? Maybe flavor? Cold Stone, and maybe I'm wrong because I don't know the scale of the company. But when I think of like, say, I'm a company that I want to license a flavor that's like, or a, a name that's well known, um, I might want to pick one that's like low enough to where I can kind of afford to be able to do this. That might be open to the conversation, but like, not too. Like, like if I were to go to Eminem Mars, yeah. They're probably not even gonna have a conversation with me, you're right? Like, monster, right? Still probably. Won't. Yeah, I think I think what you're kind of commenting on low hanging fruit was yeah. back to the point of like I think they've been so close to the fire for so long with buying sports nutrition products through Europa Sports um, that it's natural for them to always want to kind of get in there. And if the beer supplement thing was kind of their first taste and they never really got it to market, now this is like, hey, let's go for it, let's do it. Um, but you know, I think it's it it just in general like li licensed flavors. I mean. I'm surprised more of them don't happen. You know what I mean? I mean, outside of Ghost are with, you? with Warheads. Um, well, I think Warheads are the perfect size, like because they aren't like, the most massive company ever. They might still be actually family owned. If I remember what Dan said, don't quote me on that. Yeah. But it seems like you got to find the company that's not so big that they can't mess around with the supplement industry, but find someone so, who is yeah. an equal so, footing. So why I make that point is that, so most consumer staple companies that these, these CPG companies, like confectionaries, like, Mars and Hershey's or whatever, all of them over the last probably about two years have seen like ex like sales decline in, in most of their legacy products, be it Hershey bars or, or this or whatever. So as the market has shifted towards like healthier for you options and, and kind of all that of that stuff like like less carbs like why why wouldn't a company look to get into a market um, in a way to re kind of invigorate their brand in a way that's a little bit more healthy and then maybe that could be their springboard into mm. something else um, so I'm surprised that a lot I mean and maybe it's just because a lot of these um, sports nutrition brands they're, they're not engaging directly with these brands I mean you can call up any of these they all have licensed um, uh, teams on their thing and like you could pitch them what you're doing. I just don't think a lot of people are thinking about that. They're thinking, well, that's going to cost too much money, um, you know, because obviously you're going to have to cut in a little bit of the, of the uh, margin. So I think a lot of people are like, I can make that taste just like it yeah. with, you know, artificial flavors. Flavor houses now can pretty much make you whatever you want. You just need to point them towards a direction. So um, why pay for it if I'm old, like, well, like, is the logo going to make a difference? I uh, think that's what is... I, and I, I think so. So I, first of all, like my stance is just like with Dan, like I think I agree that um, taking that extra move to do that shows integrity within an industry as a whole and I think that that opens up the door for more opportunity so I I commend BSN for doing this even if you know even if Cold Stone maybe isn't as big as Mars or whatever like who, who cares it's kind of a start but I will say that I feel like it's either one of two options it's like either one people think like yeah like it's too too expensive or that that company won't even entertain it because of the industry looks bad or it's kind of like don't ask don't tell kind of like don't wake a sleeping giant you know what i mean like you had say, said before that like we're talking about energy drinks you're like rockstar is not even aware of pro stops right and it's like maybe there's like a benefit to flying low enough to where it's like do I want to be? I mean, but yeah, Glambia is a massive company. I mean, they're providing sure. protein for half the industry, so they have the firepower to, they're on the radar. Yeah, you would want to, I mean, I guess maybe to, to your point, like you would really want to make sure you don't have any skeletons in your, in your brand if you're going to approach one of those because it's going to put you on a platform that's a lot higher. Like if you were to partner with um, Butterfinger and all of a sudden like that would obviously, your, your sales would surge. And that would put you in a spectrum of brands that then get a lot of heat from a liability yeah. standpoint. So if all of a sudden you're also selling things that have like kind of gray area products or whatever, uh -huh. like it's gonna put a lot of heat on you and then like somebody's gonna look at you, some of these lawyers from across the country are gonna go, easy target, I got you for well, product claims, or I got you for this. Now I that I think about it though, it's like, like it's not uncommon for like, how, how often do you see like, okay, so like Dairy Queens and Sonics and uh, the other products at the grocery store that were like, the Oreo version of whatever like I mean so I guess it's not 
ridiculous to think like that that already goes on just for some reason not with supplements right yeah i mean i think it you know from um you know and dan was on a on a live uh, chat earlier and making comments about you know uh, official license deals over like just making flavors similar um to your point i mean i get from where dan's coming from but also like it's kind of taking the private label approach to a flavor like you could buy Oreos or you could buy chocolate, whatever the things that <laughs> come from, flavors, from, right. from Walmart. Right. It's technically the same thing, but it's a little bit cheaper. Um, if you want to buy the branded exact flavor kind of thing, you go with Ghost Warheads. Now, yeah. if you don't and you want to save a couple bucks or whatever, maybe you go with Uncle Ross, uh, whatever. You know what I mean? I don't think, I think there's a market for both. And I think Dan would agree with that, but um, I think it's just in general, like obviously his, they put their flag on, we're going to do, you know, exclusive kind of what they call collabs or just kind of like license deals. Um, so it's just a different kind of strategy. I mean, I definitely think it gives them like s some really cool marketing uh, approaches to have that Warheads uh, term. Yeah. Now you ask like, why hasn't this happened a little earlier? Maybe I kind of asked it as well. And like, so you talk about skeletons in the closet. Now, do you think some of the supplement industry skeletons in the closet have hurt the rest of the industry? Like, uh, Jervis yeah. Force Craze basically had a methamphetamine analog in it, and that was sold like millions of dollars worth of that. And then it comes out in public. It's in the USA Today. Huge, huge like yeah. skeleton in the industry closet. Does that hurt everybody? Yeah, I mean, I think in general the. You know the comment I made before about like big food and beverage going down and trying to get healthier for you. It makes sense now going the opposite direction. Like it's very hard for a sports nutrition or a nutritional product company to uh, be able to sell themselves in a way that they're going to be able to trust that their brand that they've built over yeah. 30, 40, 50 years is going to be uh, ushered in in a way that's going to be kept up to their standards and everything. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of like that stuff from a negative aspect of our industry, unfortunately that is going to hurt some of these license deals. Um, you know, when I go in, and have clients in more big food beverage um, and they talk about kind of like nutritional supplements, I, I, I'll be completely honest, they, they talk a little bit down towards it. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because of the legitimacy of it. Um, so I'd imagine all these brands, if they have a licensing department, a lot of times it's hard for them to sell or, or to believe in whatever sales approach they're giving. Um, so you got to be really strong into like, what your brand's about, which is a good kind of uh, play for like a person like Ghost that's like all about brand over product. Um, they can sell this bigger kind of strategy over like, hey, I want to put it in a product because I'm trying to make money on an ASQ. A little mm -hmm. bit different. So if yeah. you're Eminem Mars or something, let's say that you go down this route of like, I'm going to have, uh, you know, whoever, uh, PES is going to license like Snickers, right? Um, do you, does a company that size, because there's a lot, right, and, and I know this just from even like small stuff that I've dealt with, the larger a company, the more risk, the more protection, the more careful censorship you have to, like, you know, it's natural. Everybody's coming after you. So, you know, PES, obviously, they manufacture their things and, and have, you know, they create their bars and their... You know, or, or, or okay, let's use crazy example. They, they're putting meth in there because they have, but they have their in own in house. So, how involved is is Mars going to have to be? Because like they can't just trust. Like you're gonna, we're gonna sign a piece of paper and just trust that you're doing it. Because like if you're in the meth product, like that's a big. Does that yeah, make sense? Should, like, should like, Cold Stone, should Cold Stone be like? Amino acid testing these batches themselves, like how? Well, and I know I Cold Stone's probably idea. like too small for like I don't know, or maybe okay, I don't but know. Mars, maybe you should. Right. They're gonna do they're right. gonna do their due diligence on your contract manufacturing side, or if you own your own manufacturing, you're gonna do their due diligence on that. But um, in general, I think they're only gonna be testing the aspect that is gonna be the most kind of exposure to them, which. Um, a lot of times I think maybe even from the ghost example is, is more from a flavor perspective. Like does the flavor system match what people expect from warheads? Like is this But ghost could do other things that obviously affects warheads, right? I mean yeah, outside of flavors. And those are those are just within the license deal. Obviously, you know, they, they have their ass if something happens. I mean it's gonna be one of those things where uh, they're not gonna put themselves in a position that if somebody's not ushering their brain in the right way that they they're not gonna hurt them real bad. I mean you're you're basically I mean, you're basically closing shop if you would hurt like a brand that, of that big because it's, it's they have the leverage. They have 
Um, they have the lawyers teams. They have the you know everything to do those types of things. So it's just, I mean, you're definitely probably playing with fire, but it's it's the risk reward. So thing. Is that like, what do you do? Well, does that kind of answer the question why we don't see, let's say, Nutrex research yeah. going down? Because I mean, I think it comes Nutrex down. It comes down to price. It comes down to cash flows. Like I mean, you're going to have to pay upfront for the license to be able to use the thing, which is generally depending on who you work with, it could be a substantial amount of cash flow, and then you generally have to pay an X percentage of each sale. Um, so if you don't have built-in margins, and a pre-workout's a pretty pretty good one to get margin, but like if you do a protein, margins are lower, mm -hmm. or whatever. So you you generally got to make sure that you're you're good from a, a, a kind of a cash flow perspective. You got to make sure all your kind of ducks are in a row from the back end of the business to make sure it makes sense. So <laughs> I, I mean, there's just a I mean, I think with light, you're going to see a lot more licensing deals re like happening, and I think what end up kind of like firing this all up was like the shaker bottles. Like that was a that was a pretty natural progression um, because like you could put in Marvel this or you you just saw like MLB uh, teams there's probably going to be NFL there's college teams now there's all these types of things and like uh, that's an accessory but it's it's them kind of kind of like tiptoeing into license, yeah, licensing yeah licensing deals I think people now I don't think until maybe it was Perfect Shaker that kind of did the first like uh, superhero ones or whatever mm -hmm. they did like. Up at that was maybe two or three years ago. Um, nobody was really even doing any license deals with any of our, our our accessories that we utilize a lot of. People buy a lot of shakers. They buy a lot of you know whatever. And those those things never had any license deals attached to them. They were always just blender bottle or whatever. Yeah. Well, well, this is going to be part one of this video series. You'll have to subscribe to the channel for part two, which may be very many months down the road. But the irony is that right now, Dan and Ghost is actually in Las Vegas for a licensing show where companies who have awesome brands want to, and are willing to make some money to license it out. They put up a booth or whatever, have meetings, and Dan is there looking for more like whatever candy companies or whatever companies there to license from so he could partner up with them. So there's a lot to this and I think the like you're saying the supplement industry is just scratching the surface. So a lot more is to come. And so you have to subscribe to the channel because we need to get Dan in here. Dan's probably watching this video just shaking his head being like, I got more information. So we're gonna have to get him on this channel and then that'll be part two. That's it. Alright. Alright, thanks for watching everyone. This is Josh Shaw with Jay Shaw Consulting, Mike and CJ. <laughs> subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Welcome to Price File.